Intel Corporation. Three imaginative men. Life. Intel. Intel Inside. Those words used to mean something. You probably have an idea of this when you think Intel Inside now. Of your PC catching on fire, overvolting, your PC doesn't work, slower than AMD. The mind share of Intel has really gone to an all-time low. You can see it all through the media, all through YouTube. Guys, it's bad. Intel is in a very dire state right now. Recently, they came out with financials and it's not looking good. Their margin, guys, went from in the 40% to eight, the teen percents. Now, I think we're at like 18, 17% margin down from 42%. But today, I'm not going to be hating on Intel a lot today. I'm going to be giving constructive criticism in order for Intel to look at this and be able to grow. Or, you know, at least for our entertainment, because who knows if Intel will actually watch this video us as PC gamers, us as PC and hardware enthusiasts, we want to see Intel succeed ultimately, and that would just make a better innovation, innovation and better products for us all, even at lower prices. So basically, my question today is, how can we get Intel from looking like this with Pat Gelsinger looking like this to looking like this? How can we revive Intel as a company? What advice would I have to give Intel to turn this ship around. Whether it's a good thing, whether obviously it's a bad thing, people cannot really give Intel a break. And my question to everyone out there is, what can Intel do to do better? What can Intel do to turn the ship around? I, I'm tired of everyone hating on this one company like they're the only one that does something wrong. Nvidia is doing things wrong. AMD is doing things wrong. Intel's obviously doing things wrong. Qualcomm, Apple, all these people are making mistakes, right? But for some reason, that all the hate's directed towards Intel. And I know Intel's probably made the most mistakes, but guys, it just seems like people are wanting, praying on and wanting this company just to fail. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't want AMD to fail. I don't want Nvidia to fail. And I don't want Intel to fail because that means less competition, less innovation for us guys. And I'm not gonna include a buyout deal here because I think that Intel has the talent and I think that Intel has the resources to be able to turn around this ship on their own. And you may be saying, well, they haven't done that yet. And that's because they haven't focused on these key principles I'm going to talk about today. And I think that if they made these a priority, we would be seeing a different company than we see today. So guys, let's just talk about that today. And I'm not saying this, I'm not saying this as an Intel fanboy. I'm not saying this as an Intel hater. I'm saying this as a tech enthusiast that loves to see innovation and loves to see competition within the tech sphere. All right, guys, so let's get on. What does Intel need to do? Number one, be focused. Okay, so <laughs> like this is something that I think Intel's really struggled with in the past years. Um, being focused on just what is their objective? What is their main goal with this product launch, right? And number one is like they come out with this, this very lofty idea like um, Ponte Vecchio comes to mind where it's just like all these chiplets, all these different things to get, um, I think it was like a GPU or AI workload and you know it just didn't come out on time if it came out years before when it was supposed to it would have been a cool product same for arc but these products um they target a market segment that needs growth and they need um a competitor now but they don't come out with this product until two three years later when there's so much competition that they're basically worthless right so they need to follow that product roadmap. If they say they're gonna launch a product, they need to launch it, right? I'm tired of them cutting all these products that they said they were gonna launch that's gonna fill this void, and then they cut them. And hey, I think it's better to cut it than to release it late on late and it to not be competitive. But still, guys, they really have to be on the ball with their product launches, and they're gonna to have to release things when they say they will, or no one's gonna to wanna to be a Foundry customer if they're always delaying things. Number two, of be focused, they need to solve problems before they become problems. And this is what Nvidia is probably the best at in the industry at, or any other company I've ever seen. Nvidia, in fact, it's probably just because they own so much market share, they make hardware and for problems. Well, this is exactly what they do. They solve problems before they become problems. Like basically they saw the AI boom before it was a thing. They knew AI was gonna be big before anyone else did. And they made AI cores before there was a need for AI cores. 
And now we have all these GPUs and we have such development and mature and maturity in the NVIDIA ecosystem that they're just firmly planted there and no one can touch them. And this is exactly what Intel needs to do. They have the market research, they have the R&D to know what's gonna be problems, to know what people are gonna need 10, 20 years before they become a thing. And it just doesn't make sense to me that Intel didn't have an AI chip um, as strong or even, you know, even close to what AMD had when this AI boom happened, right? It just doesn't make sense. They just need to have a product ready for right when the person needs it. And that's their biggest thing is they don't have products on time. And next, I gotta say, they need to start innovating with a purpose because Intel, whether you know it or not, is actually a very innovative company. They come out with chips that are so complex and very, very cool. Just take Arrow Lake, for example, take Lunar Lake. These chips are really cool. They're on a silicon interposer. They have these different uh, GPU SOC tiles and um, they're combining different nodes. And you may be saying AMD's done this for a while, but let me tell you guys, if you know anything about the packing techno packaging technology, AMD did not do this anywhere close to what Intel did. But I mean, if we're looking at Arrow Lake now and we're like, well, why did they do this? Because it's not giving us more performance. It's about the same energy efficiency as AMD. So when they innovate for products, when they come out with products and pointing back to like Ponte Vecchio, it's just all these tiles for what purpose, right? It didn't even secure any capacity and no one, no one really bought it. They need to innovate with a purpose. They need to come out with products that people need and be smart about how they're spending their R&D budget and coming out with these products because they spend all this money on making this complex chip that's really cool, but then it doesn't solve any other problems that their previous chip did. Air Lake doesn't really solve too much problems over Raptor Lake other than instability and, and efficiency. Really, that's the only thing is efficiency. But let me go forward here. Pass be focused. It's my rant on that. Number two is they got a secure design wins in Foundry. They've already secured Amazon and Microsoft, some of the biggest companies in the world, which is cool to see. But guys, if Intel's spending this much money on their new foundries, if they're gonna be the the most advanced, have the most advanced nodes in the world. And if they're gonna be Samsung, which I think they can, they're gonna to have to install confidence in their products. They're gonna to have to start moving to their own products. Um, you know, none of this business using TSMC three, three nanometer for Arrow Lake, you know, they got they got to switch to their own nodes. Arrow Lake was originally supposed to be on 20 angstrom, but they cut that, which is something I don't like, but I understand that it was a pipe cleaner node and they had to um, just cut costs down at this moment in time. But guys, they're gonna have to start using their own products. And they announced they will for Panther Lake and Nova Lake, but still those yields up. These yields need to be 80, 90% for customers actually to come in with volume. And I believe if they have the most advanced nodes in the world and are competitive on price, even people like Apple would move over to Intel and they're gonna provide them that security and that performance because at the end of the day, all these companies want is money. And if you can make them more company than the other foundry, you're gonna get their business. So that's what they need to do secure design wins in their foundry, and they're gonna do that by installing confidence in their customers and increasing those yields. All right, number three, just be better. Like, just think about it. For consumers, this matters so much. And for server, it matters too, but like, I think if you're just, if your top chip has the best performance than any other competitor, it's going to trickle down to your other products, right? AMD has that 7800X3D, they're gonna come out with the 9800X3D very soon. And that product is just better. It's just better in gaming. And because of that, so much people look at AMD as a premium brand and they buy their products all the way through down the stack. Now Intel, they don't have to be better in every category, but they really need to shine in at least one or two categories. What they could have done with Arrow Lake is added more E-cores. They could have added more E-core clusters and totally destroyed um, Ryzen 9000 in multi-core performance, but Instead, they just kind of kept the status quo, same core count, less threads, more efficiency, and it. it's around the same performance. And at that point, um, AMD's really just kind of tying them in multi-core and destroying them and gaming performance with the X3D parts. Now they could innovate a little bit and just come out with the XD3D chip or something, maybe do it a little bit different. But really, I think just being the best applies so much more value to their company. And I understand in GPU and in AI, they, this is not feasible right now, but we'll talk about what they can do about that in a moment. But I think in CPU, there's really no reason they cannot be the best right now. They just have to um, be smart about how they design these products and really just push that performance at the high end. 
the low end, it makes sense to, you know, you don't always have to be the best, but the high end, they really got to try to get that performance up there. You know, if you can't be better, just learn, learn from others, learn from AMD, learn from Nvidia, right? You're in all of their meetings. And so you're talking about using AI, right? Well, be the first to deploy AI with your own products. And you, you may have done this a little bit, but make software stacks for your AI, like hire your own developers, make the software for the products that you have for Gaudi 3, for Gaudi 2, develop programs, develop software, and have your own servers that demonstrate this AI that people can route into and say, wow, this is really cool. Give them demos, show them what your hardware is capable of in the right software. You know, don't just rely on other people to buy your product and create AI software for that. You're gonna have to do it yourself. And it may be expensive, but it's gonna be worth it in the long run building that customer base. Number two, you know, if you can't be better learn, you know, if you can't beat them, join them, copy, you know, like I just said earlier, X3D, you're now you're on a chiplet architecture now, X, you know, 3D Vcache will probably help that chiplet architecture and gaming. Go ahead and just stack 3D Vcache on there. You're already with TSMC. You can use TSMC's packaging for that if you don't know how, and people are going to be able to really willing to pay a lot for that. If you got us like a 285K with 3D Vcache, I bet people would pay a thousand dollars for that. I do not, I'm not even lying. And that would be really cool. You know, that's just one way to copy. You can look at what NVIDIA is doing in graphics and kind of copy what they're doing there with their segmentation or whatever you want. Like, look what works for other companies and copy it. But I'm not saying to do the exact same thing, but just kind of generally, you know, what technology is working? Where are the trends moving? And do that because it seems like Intel misses these trends and misses the writing on the wall so many of the time. And it just seems dumb. And then until they're like on the edge and a bankruptcy and then they realize that's the way to go. It's, it's, it's just too late at that point. You have to see where the trends are going and follow that and understand, right? And it's kind of like the thing with x86. I think x86 is, you know, not going anywhere anytime soon, but with Nvidia moving to ARM and, um, you know, <laughs> Microsoft endorsing ARM and all these things, it may be a good idea to develop an ARM chip. I'm just saying like you get, diversify don't only put all your eggs in one basket and just go full throttle there when it's the wrong direction it, like you know what i mean um you're such a big company i think you can develop these things and and uh copy what works love to lose but love to win better and it seems like intel just they're so scared to lose they don't even try a lot of the time they just cancel a product just because they think it's not going to be the very best and i know i said earlier just be better but to be better, you have to learn, and that means you have to fail, right? So you're gonna have to love to lose. When you when Arrow Lake comes out and you get all this criticism, don't don't just take it like badly and not learn and not improve, right? Think about what Arrow, Arrow Lake did wrong. Think about why it didn't perform well in sales and what market markets it didn't perform well and change that. And then when you win, love to love that so much that you don't want to give it up don't stagnate like you did in the past be like nvidia and love to win so much that every year you're going to come out with bigger and bigger improvements just so you can keep your customers happy and keep that number going up in the stock market and then lastly intel you've invested so much in in your foundry and i think your foundry is what makes you unique intel you've invested so much in your foundry and i think your foundry is what makes you unique you have to lean into that even more than you've ever had before into the foundry into the packaging you have the ability to make chips that no one else in the world does right because you have your own foundry you have your own silicon designers you can make chiplets better chiplets are obviously have many downsides as we see all these new chips that come out if they're chiplet they have less performance more latency and bandwidth constraint you can do this better with silicon interposers smart memory design memory hierarchies you know how to do this. I really believe that you could. You could make full on graphics chiplet dies and connect them together. Like something like Falcon Shores, I saw something in the news today that you filed a patent for that. You could make like a 400 millimeters graphics, graphics die and then combine that with four other 400 millimeters graphics dies and just make a huge super chip on all a silicon interposer with HBM. Like you can do all these different things with your packaging technology. And it's crazy that you haven't done anything unique yet considering you have this ability i just don't want to see this company go under i don't want to see this company be bought out by an apple or a samsung 
seems like at every every turn just took the wrong turn and to make the wrong decision at every point and i want to see this company be competitive and come out on top and you know not forever then amd can take the crown and intel take the crown i think 2020 was a really good time because arrow Lake or alder lake came out intel's perception was a lot better they beat zen 3 um then x3d came out like it was just like we're taking the crown we're taking the crown we're taking the crown and now it just seems like we're stagnating a little bit and intel is just mind share is going so down guys and i just had to talk about this because i don't think they're a bad company i don't necessarily think they're going in the wrong direction right now i think you know uh, leaning into foundry is really good and we may have some good design chips in the future. I really just think that Air Lake should have done better and it, it was a flop. It was a flop. I was really hopeful for Air Lake, but it did not perform like I thought. Guys, go ahead and subscribe down to the channel. Once I hit a thousand subscribers, I'm fully monetized. I've hit my watch time. I've hit all my metrics. I just need a thousand subscribers and I will be monetized. So hit that down below. Also leave a comment what you think Intel should do. Is Intel savable? will intel just fall in the ground and are we just going to be buying chips from x86 on amd only and then arm from qualcomm apple and nvidia 